All right, we got 15 people in already, so I guess they were standing by. Uh, let me know how the audio sounds. Uh, my microphone isn't as good as hers, so I'm just going to get closer to it and speak up a little bit if I have to. How did that get turned off? Oh, it was turned off. But it was on. I, but it. I don't remember. Turn, I never turned it. I don't remember turned off. Okay. I must turn off, but I don't know why I would ever turn it off. Okay. All right, let's try now. Okay. That's it. That's it. Says Kathy Adams. Did that work? Kathy Vaughn says that's it. There's the sound. There it is. There. Okay. All go. right. So a little right. tiny thing called an on switch on the microphone. All right. So let me start over. Welcome to Tasty Tuesday. I hope everyone's having a great night or morning or afternoon or middle of the night, depending on where you live. And just in case you're new to Tasty Tuesday, this is a live cooking show. Okay, I get comments a lot, especially on YouTube. Why don't you prep things ahead of time? Well, because I don't know what I'm cooking ahead of time. So I have no way of being able to prep because I don't know any of the ingredients until Jeff hands them to me right here on camera. So this is as real as it gets. Seriously, like you're going to have to see me prep the food all the way through cooking the food. Okay. So it is a longer type of video, but they're a lot of fun and we try to engage a lot with you guys. So type those comments, ask questions. Jeff will filter them through to me and I will try to answer as many as I can as we're going. So tonight I decided to add in a little extra twist to Tasty Tuesday, and that is to bring in the Ninja Speedy along with the Ninja Foodie. So this is the Ninja Foodie OL series. So it's the one lid model. It's um, the model number 501. So this doesn't have the bells and whistles like the eight quart. It's the six and a half quart. Doesn't have thermometer built in or anything like that. But it is does have steam and crisp and steam and bake and some of those other features that the OL series has. And then I have the Ninja Speedy, which is uh, similar in features, but is not a pressure cooker. So I thought, let's make dinner in both, the same dinner, and see, like if I did steam and crisp in this one, and I did maybe the speedy rapid cook mode in this one, will this get done quicker? Will it be better? Which one is going to do a better job, or are they going to be the same? So I thought it'd be really fun to do that, and I told Jeff that's what I was going to do, so I have enough ingredients to do the meals in both. So anyway, let's say hi to a few people if you want to run through any comments. Sure. 
And we skip where we didn't have sound. So uh, Terry Strickland says, glad you're feeling better. Thank you, I am. Um, sound is good now. That's Robbie Conklin. Hi, Robbie. Hey, Robbie. Um, Kathleen R Reichert says, have Jeff do Tasty Tuesday. And well, I do have a date planned and I have a plan for it. So it's going to happen. And Louise isn't going to know it's going to happen. Oh, I'm not even going to know it's going to happen. You're going to know it's going to happen. I'll know it's going to happen. Okay. So oh, you want to surprise me. And then, you know, oh, see, no. I kind of like, I thought about that. I thought about putting him on the spot tonight, even and saying, look, we're going to do this together and I'll prep everything. And you're going to program the speedy and I'm going to program this. And we're going to like, you know, I'll be team foodie. He'll be team speedy kind of thing and see which one turns out better. But I thought, you know, it's going to get crowded up here. And the other thing is Jeff can't read the comments. And that's, that's what I love so much about the lives. One of us really needs to be fielding those comments and, and being able to engage with you guys. Otherwise it's just Jeff and I standing up here, you know, looking silly. So we will do that though. I think it's a great idea. Penny Estrada says, I enjoyed your live last weekend. Did you go live last weekend? It must have been last week, probably last Tuesday. Last the last Tuesday, Tuesday I was live for a Q and A. Maybe you watched the replay, but yeah, it was a Q and A. I I go live every Tuesday evening at seven p.m. U.S. Um, Central Time, and one week is a Q and A, and which is just me sitting at a computer just chit chatting with you guys. And then the other one is this live cooking show. The reason why I can't do the live cooking show every single week is because Jeff is at work on opposite weeks, and he either works days and doesn't get home until after seven. Or he works nights and he's at work. So it just works out on his weeks off. We do the live cooking show because it takes two of us to do this one. Gary Spangler says hi. Hey, Gary. How are you? And um, Mark Grimes says the Speedy seems more promotional per their 360 meal pairing ingredients for instant, instant recipes versus features yeah so the, the the main difference between the ninja speedy and the ninja foodie is number one the ninja speedy does not pressure cook okay it's square it does not pressure cook there's no pressure cooking function the other difference is there's no yogurt function but i don't think that's going to matter in fact i've just bought the ingredients to make yogurt in the speedy i'm going to use sous vide it's going to be fine so i'll use sear saute to bring the milk up to temp and and we'll use sear saute to ferment so it's going to be fine other than that i don't think there are any other major differences there's steam crisp steam bake um, I can't see the panel right now, so I'm just going by memory. And then there's a feature called Rapid Ninja Speedy Rapid Cooker or something like that. That's probably the one I'm going to use today, but I don't know if it's any different from a, the regular Steam and Crisp on this. I really don't know um, because I haven't had time to test it out, but that's one of the things that I'm looking into. It's just with some water, just running through the features, doing the timings and, and seeing if there's any uh, differences between the settings, but I don't think so really. I think the fan speed is probably different, um, when it gets between steam crisp and steam bake, just like normal bake and air crisp would be on the old models in Ninja Foodie. It's the fan speed that's the difference with those. So I think that's going to be about the only difference, but we'll find out. That'll take me a while to get the, that all done. And Deborah right. Birdsong says, hi, salt and pepper. Hey, Deborah. <laughs> I love watching you taste the food. You make oh, it look so good. Thank you. Dixie well, says, hey. Hey, Dixie. She's sitting by the fire. Oh, aren't by you lucky? River, sitting by the river. Sitting by the river fire. by the fire. Yeah, yeah. Sounds fun. I, um, Going back to Deborah's comment, now I forgot it. Um, She's oh, like she went watching me taste the food. Taste food. Let me tell you, they're real reactions. Really, they are not staged or anything like that because I have gone through and filmed an entire video, tasted the food, and said something went wrong. It tastes like crap. Literally, I probably said the S word, but. Um, I said, scratch the video. I got to retest the recipe. So it, when you guys see a video that's produced and edited like you do on YouTube, those are 100% real reactions. And I don't script anything. I have no idea what I'm going to talk about when I go into a video. 
which is kind of funny, but I don't. I just roll with it. That's the way I like to cook. That's the way I like to engage with you guys. And that's who I am. So that's what I do. So Jeff does edit out parts that are a little boring, maybe, or, you know, take too long to prep, things like that. But really, it is just me cooking. And I think it's fun. And mistakes and all, right? Because let's face it, we all make them. All right. Anything else before we get to the ingredients? I'm yeah, excited. Mark Grimes is on Team Louise. Hashtag Team Louise. Okay. Team Louise. <laughs> when we finally do that. All right. All right. Cool. Uh, Are we going to do a battle, Jeff? Oh, you know what? It's probably not a good idea because I'll lose. I don't know. John Free Series says, look at fabulous, lovely lady. Hey, John. Diane Key says, Doolin Ninji. Doolin Ninji. Yep. So we should we should take bets right now. Well, you know, not bets like real money bets, but who's team foodie, who's team speedy? You know, which one do you think is going to do better? Or you can wait to see the ingredients. I did tell Jeff because he has some suggestions for Tasty Tuesday, which we do. Like if you want to make a suggestion for ingredients for Tasty Tuesday, all you have to do is email um, Jeff at the salt of pepper .com and give him your suggestions. And he goes through them and looks and see, you know, what, what would fit. I mean, obviously like I can't, uh, I can't sous vide something that's going to take 24 hours or we'd be sitting here asleep because it's live. You know, there's no way to cut it and then go back to it. So we can't do that. So they do have to be certain types of recipes. Hopefully that take less than an hour to cook is what I like to do, or le less than an hour really from start to finish. But usually these go about an hour and a half because as you guys know, if you watch my videos, I talk a lot. So, um, but yeah, so let's find out who's going to be team speedy and who's going to be team foodie. All right. You want to start handing ingredients, babe? Yeah, well, I was just uh, texting the person that gave me these ingredients. Like and do I have to guess who that is now? Yeah. You probably do okay on this one. Maybe, maybe not. And I can can I ask questions? Yes, you can. Yes, no questions. Yes, no questions. So I'm supposed to guess who my sous chef is. Let me wait till I get the ingredients and then maybe I don't know if that'll okay, help. I don't me. know if you'll get it, but that never helps me questions. really. But all right, so we have a lot of team foodies out here. All right. So this will be interesting. Yeah, it will. It will. Well, the speedy's so new. A lot of people don't, they don't even know what it is, much less have it. But um, I have a group on Facebook for the Ninja Speedy. And, and I'll be honest with you, at first I was on the fence. I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know. But I cooked in it a couple times and I'm like, you know, it's there's a draw to it. And it may be the square design or something, but there's like a some kind of a draw to it for me. So I do like it. I still use the Ninja Foodie more. Stacia's here. She says, Hey, uh, Stacia. My Speedy arrives tomorrow. Yes, I know you bought one. Excuse me. <clears throat> yes, I know you bought one. And I am drinking nothing right now. This is just peach seltzer. All right, I'm going to get your ingredients for you. So if you see me guzzle it, it's not vodka or anything. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands. First you. thing I need to do is move this mason jar. Oh, my gosh. Is that driving me crazy? It's driving me crazy. Okay. I'm going to wash my hands because I just coughed. And then you can hand me all my beautiful ingredients. <laughs> am I cooking with beer? No, I am. You're, you're cooking with beer. Jeff's cooking with beer. All right. Let's see what we got. Right. Bring it on, Mr. Long. Protein first. Protein first is fine. All right. These look like pork tenderloin. And a lot of them. There's four of them. I will only use one package. I do have scissors somewhere, so I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, pork tenderloin. That's a good protein. And Jeff told he already gave me instructions. I'm not to put food up here because it blocks his view. It blocks their view. Their view. Okay. Your view. Okay, apples, which I almost bought today. So what kind did you end up getting? Did you what kind did you get? I got I thought it was weird you were kind of like pushing me to towards on there because I, I honey crisp. Okay. Honey crisp. Yeah, I got those because they hold their shape when they're cooked best. Okay. I Googled it. Okay. All right. Cool. Apples and pork are a beautiful combination. So that's two, exciting. Cooking liquids, which you can oh, add okay. to it if you want. Okay. All right. It's supposed to be apple cider, but it's it's September. You can't get or it's still August. You oh. can't get apple cider. It's like an apple juice. Okay, apple juice. Okay. Okay. We'll cider that up a little bit. We can do that with seasonings. Okay. 
Is that okay there? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And some apple cider vinegar. Was that in the recipe or was that something that you thought these two would go together? Apple cider okay. And okay. apple cider vinegar. Okay. Okay. All right. We're gonna, I'm going to give you the starch. Okay. Okay. Orzo pasta. Okay. Okay. I did not pick the orzo, although I think it's a good choice. That was from the recipe. So the choices in the recipe were spatzel. Okay. Is that pronounced? Yep. I spatzel. Find that spatzel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, orzo, you make it usually. Okay. Or um, okay. rice. But rice seems so boring. So. Okay. Orzo. Gotcha. It's the tricky one. Okay. This doesn't throw everything off. No, perfect Brussels sprouts. Now there's more Brussels sprouts. I was gonna say I bought Brussels sprouts today. Okay, okay, I did. I bought them. So I basically bought everything at Sam's that there's you needed. I don't think I've ever seen you cook with shallots. Yeah, nice. They just serve a mild those, onion. I hope those are large because it said three medium. I bought three that large. They were getting low. Yeah, Kroger. Our Kroger has the worst. They're fine. They're fine. And then this is as far as the spices other than salt. And okay. Pepper, that's what they recommend. Fresh thyme. And, and this was an and or, and everything I read was go easy on the sage. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. This is pretty straightforward, I think. But let's Louise twist it a little bit, okay? Because we want to do that. So I'm going to give you a list of ingredients that I'm going to need. Okay. Um, Let me write them down. Okay. Yep. Ground cinnamon. A little bit of cloves. Okay. Um, garlic powder, onion powder. Um. That's probably good for now. Okay. All right. Let me check in on my sous chef, your sous chef. Okay. All right. Let me grab a measuring cup here. So this is cool. I've never cooked orzo pasta before, believe it or not. So let's see what the instructions say. All right, your sous chef is watching. Okay, great. And meanwhile, let's see if you can... I don't know, you aren't, you're not going to figure it out from the ingredients. I'm going to go ahead and buy this stuff. Right? All right. Let's see. What does it say? Okay. Oh, ready in eight minutes, al dente in seven minutes. Okay. All right. That should work just fine. Okay, so basically the premise of the Ninja Speedy is that, and this is gonna be kind of a weird open here for me, and I, maybe I'll wait for Jeff because he can switch cameras, right? Yeah. Okay, let me wait for him because he can switch and he can show you inside so that you can see what I'm starting with. But I will start right here because we all know the Ninja Foodie, right? All right, so this is the six and a half quart Ninja Foodie. The Ninja Speedy is six quarts. So it's a little bit smaller, but not too much. It's also square, not round. Um, and I have the rack in. And uh, you'll understand why I have the rack in because we have a rack built into the Speedy. And I'm going to try to mimic these. And I also have a little plate. So it's going to kind of mimic the crisping tray. Okay, in the foodie uh, that we have in the speed. All right, so the premise of the speedy, even though Jeff isn't here yet, um, is to cook your starch and veg down below and then put your protein up on the rack. And you basically steam crisp, or you can do the rapid cook speedy thing, which I can't see what it is right now. I'll read it to you. I'll turn this around so I can actually see it. So meantime, while we're waiting for that, let's go ahead and just get our Brussels sprouts prepped up while I'm waiting for Jeff. And let me get a thing here. Oh, I was, I was thinking, what is he doing anyway? I know what he's doing. He's finding me my spices. All right, so let's say we're going to do about a cup and a half of the Brussels sprouts. 
typically just use this whole bag. So I'll do a cup and a half in the foodie and about a cup and a half in the speedy. Huh? Yeah, ground cinnamon, cloves, or look, did, look in a little, um, I'll find them, yeah. based on ingredients who this uh sous chef is so yeah so um okay first of all am i related to them no okay um do they live in the united states yes have we met them in person yes hmm. is it dixie again nope amber again no repeats. No repeats. Christine? No. Hmm. Gosh. Who is it? <laughs> Not a legitimate question. And Robbie's already done it. Uh, okay, did we meet them through the salt and pepper or before? Before. Oh. I'm not related to them. We met them before the salt and pepper. Boy, that even makes it more confusing. Do they live in Maryland? Um, you don't know where they live? Not Maryland. What am I? Hmm. I don't know. This is a hard one. All right, just read comments. I'll keep thinking. Now we got a couple people who join late and they're okay. wondering what's the new ninja. Okay. So this is next to me here is the ninja speedy. And what I'm doing with Tasty Tuesday tonight. I was putting a little spin on it, and I'm going to make the same thing in both the Ninja Foodie and the Ninja Speedy and see if one takes you know less time or if one is better than the other or if they're about the same. So the Ninja Speedy is, it doesn't pressure cook, but it does most of the other things that the Ninja Foodie does. And it's square in design. It's a little bit smaller. I would definitely say that the Ninja Speedy is designed for four portions max that would be my my thought for most things anyway um but i guess if it's all put in the bottom like if it's one pot you could probably get six to eight servings out of it but if you're doing it layered like i'm gonna do today it would be about four and that's probably the same with the six quart foodie as well all right mark grimes is concerned about the way that you're trimming the uh he's concerned the sprouts. yes why? He says, uh, trim the tough part on the bottom of the stem before you have them. Which I just did. Oh, you are cutting the, the bottom off? Yeah. What, why? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's concerned. He's concerned. He wants to make sure that everything goes It's well. okay. I'm doing, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm cutting the tough part off the bottom, and then I peel the outer leaves off. That's how I do it. How do you do it? Okay, so um, Mark said it looked like you were just having them. Yeah, oh, no, I'm keeping them whole, actually. All right, I'll do it. You're, so you're doing the trim. You're just not cutting them in half. I'm not cutting them in half. Am I supposed to? No. He says uh, his eyes are bad. 
Okay. With Fifty years eyes. My, so are mine. Eyes, okay. So are mine. Fifty so, year old eyes. My so are mine. I thought maybe you might have some kind of cool thing, like I no, had never heard of, like some kind of magic way to uh, trim the Brussels sprouts better than what I'm doing. I was kind of excited there. I'm like, Ooh. Melissa Hook says, um, no, was it, yeah, she says that speedy machine is huge, but it's kind of an illusion because the uh, the one on the right on your left is so far away from the speedy they're actually about same, same size height. when the lid is closed on both they're about the same height i think the one on the left is actually a little taller yeah the foodie's a little taller but it's further away from the camera and uh it does i thought that too but yeah it's not, yeah, it's not, not. that big I, I would say the footprint because actually um dorothy wanted them side by side and so I'll try to do that, Dorothy. I don't know if you've joined us yet or not, um, but Dorothy was very interested in seeing them side by side. And I thought that I, I'll bring them together when I'm done prepping and everything. Okay, so we need to get to the recipe a little bit. Jeff, will you rinse these? Sure. What I'm, what I'm guessing, and I don't know this because, again, I still haven't even guessed who the sous chef is, but what I'm guessing is that this – is this a recipe that all these ingredients go in one or is like the pork slow cooked in the cider and like, like explain that all to me. Like, can you explain that? Cause do you know? I do. Okay. So let me turn on my microphone. Hopefully you guys can hear me. So the, um, the pork and the apples go together. Yes. The shallots go with that. Okay. The orzo is a um, something you serve it with. Yeah. You want to do that. And yeah. The um, Brussels sprouts were not part of the original recipe. That was okay. I grabbed. Okay. Okay. All right. Does that help? Yes. That helps tremendously. So we have to modify that recipe a little bit because we're not going to cook the pork down in the bottom with the orzo. And that's where we're going to put the orzo so that it gets the benefit of the steam. Now, because the Ninja Speedy does not pressure cook, we can't do the pot and pot like we could if we wanted to pressure cook everything in the foodie. So we need to have the starch, the liquid absorbing stuff, which is the orzo in this case, we need to have that on the bottom. That's what you got me, right? Orzo, yeah. That's gotta be on the bottom so that as the liquid boils. So you can imagine like if I just poured in apple cider and poured that in with vinegar and then made the orzo in that, it would be a very strong tasting, probably not very good. So I have to kind of revamp this a little bit. What I'm thinking is that at the very end, I will make a quick sauce, I think. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Let's just, we'll get the basics done, that's for sure. And that's kind of the idea with the Ninja Speedy is that it's the basics of uh, what you would consider what we call a 360 meal sometimes, which is basically the carbohydrate, whether it's rice, pasta, some other kind of grain, and then the protein, which is usually meat, but it could be a different kind of protein, um, and then a vegetable. That's usually the three components of a meal. And that's kind of what the Ninja Speedy is, let's say, built on, so to speak. So they want you to... Um, layer these meals and have your, actually, it's not totally, there's only two layers, so it's not layered like you would traditionally think. Um, but for this one, I'm going to put the Brussels sprouts with the pork, with the apples, with the shallots, with the seasonings, and maybe, I don't know, do we have bacon? We should have some bacon. Okay. If we have some bacon, I'm probably going to add some of that in. All right. So that's my goal. Oh, this one is tough. All right. I need to go back to a comment here. Okay. I've got a couple of them here. Um, who was it? Colleen Wolf. I didn't even said, get my uh, through that. Colleen Wolf would so love to though. cook along. So in a future Tasty Tuesday or a future live of some sort, okay. everybody had a list of the ingredients and those who want uh -huh. to cook along. That'd be fun. That, that'd be a blast. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, yeah, I mean, that's something that Jeff could obviously send out the ingredients. Um I don't know what they are. And I think that's an important part of Tasty Tuesday. I mean, because if I'm going to plan the recipe out, 
that I know what I'm doing and that I don't know. I actually prefer not knowing what I'm doing in the kitchen because I don't know. I enjoy cooking so much. I like thinking it through last minute and just doing it. It's so. a little more interesting. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. It's fun for me. I'm probably not cutting these shallots like you would, like you normally would, but there's a reason for that. So. Churchy I mean. says hi. Hey, Churchy. See you in what? A um, month and a half? Yep. Okay, Something like I'm that. Gonna see, I'm going to see if the sous chef, the surprise sous chef, wants to give a hint. I only got one hint. Okay, is it a, is it a boy or a girl? That's that's not a yes no question. Oh. Okay, is is <laughs> <laughs> it's a boy. Okay, it's a boy. Now it's you're a, probably guessing. It's a boy. Somebody we knew before. Is it a friend of yours? Yes. John? No. No, it's a friend of yours. Mark Lyon? Yes. All right. I got it. All right. There we go. Okay. The, clue, right. the clue he gave me was Bruce Blues and Barbecue. Yeah. That's where you met him. And he doesn't live in Virginia, in Maryland. That's right. Okay. Virginia. So let me think about this. I'm going to do a little bit of apples. I need some garlic, babe. Do we know where our garlic is? I need like cloves of garlic. Yeah, I think it's in the other kitchen over here. Okay. Woo! Again, this is going to be a little weird because it, it's so backwards I'll for me. Okay, so look down in here. So this is the uh, rack that comes with the speedy, and then there's the square pot. So that's just like the inner pot. So this rack has two positions. You can pull these little feet out, and it'll raise up about halfway through, or you can put them down and then it'll sit in the bottom. But for this recipe, we're going to put them up. So there we go. All right. So now we have the inner pot and I'm going to put in, looks like there's about two cups. I'm just going to use it all. Okay. I'm going to put a cup of each, a cup of orzo in each inner pot here. All right, and I'll use chicken stock. I got out chicken stock and um, beef stock, but I think chicken stock will go better with the pork. All right, so we're going to put a cup in. I'm looking forward to this. I think this is going to be good. A little more. Well, you know what? Cup and a quarter. Okay, cup and a quarter. If my dog is over here saying, what are you making delicious, mom? Mm -hmm. All right, then we need to add in some water, beef stock, white wine and, and not beef stock, chicken stock, white wine and water, whatever you wanted to do. The idea is not to like saute this or anything. Like ordinarily I might toast the orzo with a little bit of butter, but that's not the idea behind these meals. The idea is really to do it quick. I need salt. I'll be right back. Um, okay. Now I almost always use fine grind sea salt in all my recipes, but I've been, I ordered this online. It's diamond crystal kosher salt and I am loving it. So I'm thinking I'm gonna actually switch. It's just got this great feel between your fingers. Oh, I just absolutely love it. All right, you always want to salt your pasta water and it's gonna be no different here, but we're not gonna go quite as salty because remember there's gonna be little evaporation. And if I measure correctly, we won't have to drain this or anything. So I'm going to put about a half of a teaspoon in both of the kosher salt. I'm going to put a little bit of pepper, about a quarter teaspoon. You can always salt and pepper this afterward to taste. All right. So we've got one and a quarter cups. We're going to have a little bit of evaporation. 
Probably not half though. So I think I'm going to use one, I'm guessing, okay? I mean, like, let's be real about this. I've never done this. Um, one and a quarter cups. I'm going to go one and three quarter. Oh, is that going to be too much? Okay. First of all, we know we're going to go one to one, obviously, because you do that with pressure cooking and there's really no evaporation. So we know we're going to go one to one. All right. And so I'm going to put in one cup of chicken stock and a quarter cup of apple juice just to bring that apple flavor into the orzo. Somebody asked how much the speedy costs. I think it's like 200 bucks right now. Quarter cup into that one. Quarter cup into that one. And then what? Let's say <clears throat> we're going to have some juices from the pork going down in there. So we got to think about that. So one and a quarter. You know what? I'm going to stop here. Do you think that's enough, Jeff? Enough what? Enough liquid. I don't think it is. I think I need a little bit more. I'm going to add another quarter cup of chicken stock each. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so that means I'm, I've am i added one and a half cups. And I might be light on my liquid, but I've got that pork juice that's going to come out. So, all right. So we're going to do one and a half cups to one and a quarter cups of orzo. There we go. All right, final decision made. Let's see if it works. All right, next. I think Orzo absorbs a lot of liquid, so you probably made the right decision. Well, I might have gone, might not have enough in there then. What do you oh, think? I don't know. Really? I mean, I might not. What do you guys think? Do you think I should add more? I just don't want it to be soupy, but we're going to be, you know, we're going to steam. And then we're going to be, you know, basically air crisping or whatever we do, whether we steam crisp or whether we steam bake. What do you think? Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking everybody. Uh -huh. I'm waiting for an answer. What, what does everybody think? Okay. Maybe I should do one and a half. I did one and a half. Maybe I should do one and three quarters. I'm going to do one and three quarters. I'm going to do one and three quarters. And I'm going to do the other half, the other quarter cup apple juice. I hope this is good. Okay. Oh, gosh. I hope it's enough. I hope. Oh, well, it's done now. Find out. Okay. Now, I think with the garlic. So, Brittany Henderson said... Before you pour that in, I think you're good on liquid. Don't add more. Also, never cook with orzo either. Never cook with orzo? Is that what you said? But then uh, Rebecca Tolbert said, go up another quarter cup. So Yeah, okay. Well, so uh, let's make sure I know what I did. What did I do, Jeff? I don't remember now. I'm, uh, I'm oh, my gosh. Okay, what did does I do? Does anybody have, does anybody keep, been keeping track? One and three quarters cup, I think, to one and a quarter cup. Right. You want to update everybody on what you're making? Um, I don't know yet, but the ingredients are pork tenderloin, uh, Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> Did you find me bacon? Yep. I'll go <clears throat> bacon. Excuse me. What? Just... Um, Brussels sprouts. And what else, Jeff? Um, orzo pasta. And now I'm putting about three cloves of crushed garlic. Just, you know, crushed with my knife here into the pot. I'm not mincing it because I kind of want it to have a little bit of texture because I'm also going to put, oh, I'm going to put an apple in there. Now I might, no, you know what? I'm going to leave the apple out because that's going to give more juice too. Oh boy. We'll see. Okay. No bacon. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. No big deal. Okay. We'll leave the shallots for, although I think they'd be good in there. We're going to leave those alone. All right. Now, just to bring a little bit of flavor into the orzo, I'm going to add in 
a tiny bit of garlic powder. Yes, I know I just added garlic, but I like garlic. So put in a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder into the bottom here and then some onion and and then all right and now i am going to take one of these i'm going to take one sage leaf rinse it off and then i'm going to bruise it really well but i'm not going to put it in like like whole, like, I mean, like chopped up. I'm going to put it in. Uh, let me think how I do this. I'm going to put it in um, whole, not chopped. But first, I'm going to beat it to kind of release the sage flavor. Oh, it smells good. But sage is very strong. Okay, now we need to prep our pork. So let me see. How am I going to do this, guys? I haven't even thought this through yet. So we're about to make a seasoning blend, but I'll do that last. So we need to have this here, right like that. We need to have this here. And ideally, like if I was making this and I knew what I was doing, I would have everything prepped already. I wouldn't put the liquid into the pasta so soon, but because we're doing it this way, live, that's what I'm doing. Now, I'm just going to slice these shallots best I can and lay them on the bottom here. Bacon would have been really nice, but it's okay. I hope this tastes good because I would like to do this as a recipe. What do you think, Jeff? It's yeah, good. it's probably I mean, going to be perfect. Yeah. All right. Any comp? It's actually more interesting than the original recipe, which was basically just pork. It was like an autumn pork and apples. Mm -hmm. yeah. My, this is really slippery. <laughs> so Try not to cut my finger off live here. Rebecca Tolbert says, I just want to say I love watching you all do this. Oh, thank you. We enjoy doing it. I mean, we really do. Jeff and I always have enjoyed cooking together. Now, normally, obviously, if we're not live, he's not manning the camera. He'd be over here, you know, drinking beer, talking to me, listening to some music or something. And, of course, oh, being, being my sous chef. Yes. Being my sous chef. All right, do you want to, uh, I'll use one apple each, I think. Um, you could use more if you wanted. You want to rinse those off for me, Han? Yeah, it's interesting. The um, the recipe actually called for three for one recipe. But you're, yeah. You're the boss. yeah, but remember, I think I'm going to make a sauce at the end. Mm -hmm. So, all right, now let's get back to Mark Grimes and him thinking that I was cutting the Brussels sprouts in half. And I didn't. I left them whole. And I did that on purpose. Now, it could turn out to be a mistake. I'm not sure yet. Um, but my thinking is the pork tenderloin is going to take about 20 to 25 minutes to bake. And we're going to steam first, right? So we're going to steam and then essentially bake. Whether I go air crisp, whether I go bake ninja speedy mode. It doesn't matter. They're essentially the same thing. It's a moist heat that's going to then be followed up with a dry heat. I think the Brussels sprouts are going to be perfect, perfectly cooked whole. I like my Brussels sprouts tender, but not soft. Okay. If you liked your Brussels sprouts softer, then you would want to cut them in half or even quarter them. And again, this could be a mistake. I don't know yet. Right. I have no idea, but since I don't know, we just wing it. I don't know. But it's better for me, personally, just the way I feel about things, to undercook. So I'm going to leave them whole the first time I try this combination of ingredients. Because next time, I know that I can cut them in half. And if they're not done enough, 
well, then I could just cook them longer, right? I can just steam them a little bit longer or air crisp them a little bit longer. It's going to be fine. All right. Now, I'm not going to worry about the skins or anything with these uh, apples. I will take the core out, though. But I'm not going to worry about anything else because, number one, time. Number two, I don't mind the skin. These down. This is going to be a great autumn meal. If it works, it's going to be beautiful. Brittany Henderson asked, What do you guys usually listen to when you cook? I like a band called Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors. Um, and Jeff likes all kinds of different things. So Jeff will have to answer the, the rest. My go to's. Obviously, Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors, but um, any Southern Rock and, um, well, today I was listening to um, Steely Dan radio on Pandora, so I got a pretty wide range of uh, music. Brittany was saying that she jams to Mark Anthony, who I don't listen to. Or 80s hair bands, which I also don't listen to, but I don't mind them. They're younger. She's younger. <laughs> We're old people. Yeah, I would say. I mean, really, I don't listen to any anything but your whole friend, the neighbors. I, I, it's and it's a radio station, so they play different things. Who's the other guy that you really like on there that you just said we need to go see oh, him? Um, Ray LaMontagne. Uh, turn my mic on. Ray LaMontagne, one of my favorite artists. Really. And then who's that other guy um, that he's he's gone. He died young. But we listened to him. We saw that that, that um, I don't even know if it was a documentary or it was an actual movie. I can't oh, remember. That was Blaze Foley. Yeah. So yeah, Blaze Foley, anything along that, those lines, um, John Prine, like that stuff. I don't even know what time it is. 7.44. Jeez. So anyway. 7.44, you've been prepping. I've been prepping. I'm sorry. It, it is taking me a long time to do this. I talked a lot in the beginning, so I'm sorry about that. All right. Jokey. Now, of course, we need to season, and we're going to season with a little bit of pepper, probably another quarter teaspoon of pepper. That's totally optional. Salt really is not optional unless your doctor absolutely told you you can't have it because it's important. And probably about a half of a teaspoon I'm putting on top here. Some of it's going to go down into the risotto, so we'll see. Do I over season? I don't think I will. All right, now these are just some thyme leaves. You want to give these a quick rinse for me, Jeff? Sure. So I'm just taking out about five or six of them. And I also have, I'm going to not do the garlic and onion on this part of it because I'm going to do that for the pork rub. So let me go ahead and clean this stuff up and let's get our pork rub going. All right, so with these, you can do it a, a couple different ways. You can just put them in like that or just throw the entire stem in. It's not going to matter. I better save some for the other one. This is so pretty. Like, I am so excited about this. Okay. Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate this. This is a nice fall, fall uh, meal here. All right, I want to get the right, because you guys are probably going to scream at me, but it doesn't matter. I am using, I use the same measuring spoon for every single spice. <laughs> and I don't care if people don't agree with that because I'm not dirtying up 500 measuring spoons for this. One teaspoon of salt, but you know what? I need to double this because I'm making two. So two teaspoons of salt. 
one teaspoon of pepper. My go-to ratio, I don't know why, is two to one, two parts salt, one part, um, one part of pepper. And then depending on what it is, then I'll decide whether or not I might do equal amounts of onion and garlic, um, equal amounts to the pepper. But for this, I'm not going to do that. I'm halving it. So two teaspoons of salt for the two tenderloins, one teaspoon of pepper and a half of a teaspoon of the uh, garlic powder and onion powder. And then I'm going to guesstimate a little bit. And oh, no, I don't have to. I've got a quarter teaspoon here. I'm going to put a quarter teaspoon per pork tenderloin. So we're going to do half a teaspoon of that. And then close. I'm just going to do a quarter teaspoon. That's going to be my pork rub. Then I'll get the pork tenderloin out. Do you have? Oh, you got my sister's great. And then I will. CJ's watching. Hey, CJ. He was actually asking what's in the foodie and the speedy. So do you want to go through it while I trim up the pork so we can get this? Yeah. Get this show on the road. Best. Basically, right now it's apples and Brussels sprouts and uh, sage and thyme. And in the bottom, underneath everything, on the bottom layer is orzo, which is being cooked in. Apple cider vinegar no. and what? Apple um, juice. I didn't put some vinegar down there. Apple juice. You didn't put any vinegar. I haven't put any vinegar. It's all apple apple yeah. juice. So now she's breaking out the uh, pork loins. We got two pork loins, one for each. And we're basically doing a side by side, the exact same recipe in both to uh, compare, not the recipes, but to compare the tools. All right. Um, move those over. So can you I see? I also forgot the shallots that were on the top. Oh, yeah. I put those in. All right. So now I'm just going to uh, do a real quick trim of this pork. Um, excuse me, Gus. I don't need Gus. you up here. I do not need you trimming up the pork tenderloin. Nobody this wants like to see. I bet you he could. So I call this silver skin. I've been corrected. People say it's not. I say it is. <laughs> um, and I take it off. It's tough. It's a, like a, a connective tissue. Well, this is the silver skin, and then underneath is the real connective tissue that you definitely want to get off. And you can't really get to it unless you remove the silver skin. So they all both come off. And Mark Grimes says uh, unseasoned pork loin straight out of the package. He was letting everybody else know. Yes, it is absolutely. Yes, unseasoned. it is unseasoned. I have gotten the marinated kind before, um, and I just tend to like to get the plain and then season them up myself. Obviously, it's not going to be marinated because we don't have any time to do that. But, um, you know. It is what it is. And this knife that I'm using, in case anybody cares, is just a really, really, first of all, it's too small. I, my bigger one's somewhere else, but I don't know where. Um, it's just like a, it's a, um, fishing, fillet it's a fishing fillet knife. Yeah, it's a fish fillet knife. You bought from a fishing store. And it was very, they're very cheap. You can actually get them for $12 at Walmart. Oh, are they at Walmart? They're awesome, yeah. Okay. All right, that looks good. So that's one pork tenderloin. Now this is a pork tenderloin, not a pork loin. Um, they are totally different, totally different cook times. So definitely know that. And each pork tenderloin is about one pound or so, sometimes they're two, but that would be a big one. This is probably about one and a half pounds. So you can get four servings out of it, but if you have big appetites, really, it, it may be three. Now for me, me and Jeff, we could get four out of it. And then I'm just putting half of that rub on. And we got some good comments about music. A lot of people that like, uh, we got Queen and the Eagles. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We love all that stuff. Yes, 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 yes. All right, now we're gonna keep going here. Do this one, and then we have to pick our functions. So I don't have like a speedy mode, obviously on the Ninja Foodie, but I've got Steam Crisp or Steam Bake. I think I'm gonna go with Steam Crisp. Again, the only difference is gonna be the fan speed, most likely, I'm not the engineer, but that's what I've gathered over the years. 
from different people that are engineers over at Ninja. Um, I think I found a Reddit explanation on it one day. So I go with that. I figure they know what they're talking about. So um, I don't know. I'm going to use the rapid cook on this one just because I'm really curious to see how much different it is. And I'm going to use steam and crisp on this one. Or do you think I should use steam and crisp on both to keep them more even? What do you guys think? This yeah, one's a little fattier. Personally, I don't think they're. So Mark they're Grimes said, so wait, these are going in unseasoned? I thought you were seasoned. I did. The first one was seasoned. Yeah. Whoa, I'm trying to follow your action. Right? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would say that I'll yeah. to show you that's the first one is in there with the seasoning on it. Yep. I know. I mean, I'm, I'm heavily trimming this one, mostly because I can tell that it's a different size. It's a little bit bigger than this one. And I don't want any true unfair advantages here for the foodie over the speedy. So I'm trying to get them to about the same size without worrying about weighing them. And then, of course, get all this icky stuff off that we don't want to eat. All right, that looks pretty good. Oh, I just spilled some. I might... know Mark Grimes, here's your seasoning. This is the same way she did the other one. Yeah, that's the rub. Of course, I think I put a little bit more on that one. Oh, well, that's just gonna, that's not gonna affect cooking. That's just gonna affect taste. It'll be fine. Okay. So again, going on, same kind of way here. All right, let me wash my hands and then we can get these programmed up and they can start to cook and then we can chat while they cook. All right, I'm gonna show you. That's the uh, looking down into the Ninja Foodie. You see the pork loin up on top. Now underneath is the orzo for people that didn't catch that. The orzo is in apple juice only. What is it, about a cup, cup and a quarter? Uh, the apple juice and it's apple juice and the chicken stock. And, and I did half of a cup, stock. half of a cup of apple juice to a cup and a quarter of chicken stock. We were supposed to remember that and I didn't remember it. I don't know. Right. Now we're going to look down at the other one, same thing. You can see the Brussels sprouts there. You can see Gus in the background. Yep. Shot. And then I'm going to also add in some sage leaves because that was part of Mark Lyon's whoops, um, thing. So I'm going to add some in. Well, you have to be careful with those, don't you? Those are strong. A little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. So just give them a quick rinse. And I'm not going to chop them up, but I'm just going to kind of break them up a little bit. So I'll put the equivalent of maybe two leaves in each one. Just over the Brussels sprouts, over the pork a little bit. I don't do a whole lot of um, cooking with fresh herbs when I'm doing a dry heat, but because we're going to steam and crisp, I think it's going to be it. Fine. And we can also want we'll just throw some on there like that. And then we're going to do one more thing. And that is a really quick drizzle of oil just over the, oh, I just got oil all over my shirt. There goes that shirt. I'll tell you. Always. And that will be completely ruined because oil doesn't come out unless you have tricks. If you have tricks, let me know. Okay, let's get to doing it. So I'm gonna have to turn this because I won't be able to see it. Okay, so we're gonna turn it on. We flip this little guy up to rapid cook and then it gives me steam meal, steam and crisp, steam and bake, steam and proof. I'm gonna do steam and crisp. I'm gonna keep it exactly the same. So we're gonna go to, how do I select that? Steam and crisp. 
and the temperature that I want to cook the pork tenderloin on, because that's what you set. You set the temperature. The steam is just the steam. There's no temperature setting for that. It is what it is. Um, and you can go from, what, 450, but I don't want to cook the pork tenderloin that hot. Let me think. What do I want to cook it at? In the oven, I would cook it. Okay, let's go basic. Let's do 350, okay? All right, so I got that set up. Same thing here. We're going to turn it on. Let me move all this out of the way. If I can see it. That's why I don't do too many videos with this. It's hard to say. All right, we want to go. First of all, we need to move the slider to the middle. And that says steam crisp, right? Yeah. And then we're going to take this to 350. Is that, that's right. Am I going the right way? Yeah. 350. Now, time. Ooh, I have no idea. So let's do, let's do 30 minutes. What did this one set to? Time. Let's do 30 minutes on both. Okay, I got the start here, right? And I got the start here. Are we ready? Are we ready? Okay, one, two, three. Okay, doesn't matter if this is sealed or vent because we're steaming. This is all set up. Everything's good. All right, now we wait and see what happens. And I'm going to check this in about 20 minutes because I have a feeling it's going to be done. It's probably going to be done in 15. But I don't know that, so I'm just going to set the time more and then check it with my handy-dandy thermometer. Okay, so your friends are telling you Dawn dish soap on oil stains. Okay. So we might have a wardrobe change mid-show here. <laughs> so if you want to put some Dawn dish soap on that, find something else. Does it have to be done like right away or, or it won't work? Good question. <laughs> okay, so Mark says you're handicapping the foodie. I'm not exactly sure how that Mark, is being handicapped. Mark Grimes. How am I handicapping it, Mark? Good question. So this will be interesting to see how these come out. And it, I mean, I set everything the same. Right. So somebody says sprinkle talcum powder on oil sparks, oil spots, place paper towel both on top and the bottom of the fabric and iron lightly, dust off. Them. Oh, I've never heard of that. I, that sounds like that would really work. Okay, so Mark Grimes is saying use the built-in thermometer on the OL701. I'm not so using the OL701, Mark, because that would be an eight quart and we don't want that size difference. So this is a six quart, this is a six and a half quart. That's as close as I can get um, to be the same. So we don't have the built-in thermometer, but why would, I mean, I wouldn't use that because it, it's that's like totally different. I mean, I could if I wasn't testing it against the speedy, but the time doesn't matter because it's not like I can't open the lid. It's not like I can't stop the cook before the 30 minutes is up. It really makes no difference. I could set these both for 90 minutes and it wouldn't make a difference because I can stop it at any time. The one thing you do want to keep in mind though, when you're doing anything with steam crisp, steam bake, whether it's the foodie or the speedy, is you don't want to open up the lid, even though you can at any time. You don't want to open up the lid after the steam has been built at least for 10 minutes after the countdown starts because you still have steam in there and you wanna get all the benefits from that hot steam cooking the food. That's what speeds up the cooking process and keeps things nice and moist, you know, inside the pot. So those are my tips. Okay. Okay, so Dixie I mean, has a suggestion for your shirt. She okay. says wine, it fixes everything, LOL. <laughs> just drink? <laughs> or do I pour wine on my shirt? <laughs> just drink it, drink it you don't, then you won't care. <laughs> Okay, so so here's a question for you, Louise. Mm -hmm. How many people do you think are watching right now? Um, uh, 150. Okay, so Louise thinks 150 people are watching. It's double that. Oh my goodness gracious. Well, now you're gonna see me fix my shirt live. Without Dawn. Without Dawn, I'm gonna I'm gonna put some seltzer. I've heard that. Oh, Pulsar1984 says husband reveal. Okay, since we got a little bit of time, I'll come out. 
Okay, good. Why don't you come out and chat? Well, I don't uh -huh. know how much chatting I'll do. I'll come out and say hi. Okay. And she also says, I lo love you, Queen. Oh, thank you. All right, now I put Dawn on because I don't really want to ruin this shirt. Jeff, you talk. I'm going to go try to clean this up. Look, you got over there. Okay. All right. Time to change. All right. That should, <laughs> I should have brought my guitar. Then I could have played guitar. But, uh, all right. So I'm going to grab another beer and then I'm going to talk a little bit. Ooh, this is not my thing. All right, everybody. I'll be right back. Okay, so I can stand here for about a minute and be comfortable. Then I won't be comfortable. I've got Gus running around back here. So those of you who don't know about Gus, I'm going to bring him up here. Oh, yeah, big. It used to be easy to lift up, but now you're too heavy. It's okay, buddy. This is Gussie. He is about coming up on three years old. This month, in September, he will be, the end of September, roughly, he'll be three years old. We don't know exactly. But he's a rescue. A friend of ours um, rescued him and then um, couldn't um, really take care of him and asked us if we would take care of him. Of course, we took him in. He's got a liver shunt, so he's got special diet, special um, medicine that he has to take all the time. But He's not going to get any bigger than this. We don't know what kind of dog he is. We think he's got some Labrador. Um, he's got some sort of a hunting dog in him. He's definitely got some herding dog in him because when we try to walk down the hallway, he is right at our legs trying to tell us which way to go. So maybe a little cattle dog, something like that. But he's a good boy. And Louise is back, wardrobe yeah. change, and I can get out of the shot now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let Louise come back in. Gus has made his debut. Oh, good, good. Good, good, good. All right, so we haven't started to steam too much on either one yet. That's what I'm waiting for. Um, they will start to steam, both of them. Oh my gosh, I hope I didn't put too much liquid in with that Orzo. So Jeff, what, what gives you the idea that Orzo absorbs a lot of liquid? Because it's very thick. Okay, so dense, okay. But do you think it's any thicker than a rotini? No, but it's thicker than rice. Yeah. But it's also not rice, it's a, it's a pasta. It is a pasta. So I, I hope this is good. Much. Well, the nice thing about it is everything's going to be still be separated. So your if your orzo doesn't come out right, you yeah. can have a backup plan. Yeah. Like um, reheat some what I'm hoping, okay, so while all this is going, because what I was going to do is do a little sauce. Now, I can't do the sauce stovetop because, all right, it's 8.05. So this Speedy started the countdown already, didn't it? Which one? The Speedy. Yep. Yep. That and this one still is it's got still. One notch. It's on the last notch. Yeah. So this one got a quicker start. Because it's less volume inside. Less volume inside. And we see steam coming out now. So, anyway, what I was going to do is I was going to make a little sauce. And now I'm trying to figure out um, how I want to do that without making this too complicated for everybody. Like, I'm sure they want it to be done. Have, you know, when these are done, dinner should be done. So ordinarily I would use the stove, but Jeff has a camera on it. Okay, so, no, I don't have a camera on it. So, oh, that, I have a camera on it, yeah. So for people that are checking in late, um, somebody did say, what do we make it? Basically, Pork loin with apples and the vegetable is going to be um, Brussels sprouts and then orzo is down at the bottom. What I'm looking for right now is 
I'm just going to put some apples. I don't know what I'm doing. Like I said, I would do this on the stove. You know what I can do? I don't want this to take longer, though. How about I throw it in the other pressure cooker? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, just throw it over here. Yeah, she's gonna go ahead and cook this off camera. Yeah, I'm gonna make the sauce over right here. So I'll put everything in the pot that I'm gonna use to make. This is gonna be the sauce for the pork, okay? So I'm gonna put in two apples. Again, ordinarily I would really do this on the stove, but I'm gonna use sear saute. And for this, I am going to peel them because I want the apple puree. I can pressure cook this. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pressure cook it for a minute. And then maybe I won't have to really puree it much. What do you think, Jess? Well, that smells good, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And look, this one is like going to town. This one. That other one's. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. So that was three minutes difference. It was exactly three minutes difference. I'm getting a lot of different smells here. The They're all good, though. Yeah. I just smell some garlic. Mm -hmm. I smell some sage. Definitely get the sage. The sage is almost the strongest. Not surprising, right? Mm hmm. When somebody asks, what is that square ninja? That's the ninja speed. That's yep. the dude. Did Mark ever say why he thought we were? Disadvantaging the ninja booty. Yeah, Mark Grimes. Uh, why I'm just we, curious uh, what he what what he. Yeah, why what is handicap in the, the control won't be handicapped. He says the know. ninja foodie, and I'm not sure why. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, oh, maybe it was about the temperature probe. But if but, but neither. Of them but neither. Them. Yeah, yeah. These two don't have them. The models don't. Neither one of these models have them. And for anyone who's joining late, they're the exact same thing are in both these pots. I'm just, I wanted to see which one turned out better or, or if they're the same or whatever. So I did and steam and crisp steam on both. And crisp on, same setting on both. Yeah. Same temperature, same time, same. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of steam coming out of the speedy. It's yeah. A little bit. Which you can't really see, but I see Yeah, it. I see it. It's being blown down because I've got a fan overhead. So it doesn't oh, you're blowing it? Down. Okay, you're blowing it a little bit. There's steam coming out of it. Not nearly okay. as much. Well, do we know that, though? We don't really know that because you've got the fan blowing. So, but it, but it's it, three minutes behind, too. Yeah. All right, keep an eye out for, like, water notices, although I... I think I have plenty of liquid. I think I have too much liquid. All right. So then I'm going to put in two cloves of garlic into this. Um, I'm going to put about, let's see, I want it to be a sauce. I want it to be kind of on the thick side. So I'm only going to put about a quarter cup of apple juice a splash, so maybe a tablespoon of the vinegar. And then a little, just a tiny bit of salt. Oh, that smells good. Okay, I'm gonna use about a quarter teaspoon of salt, not too much. I'm not gonna put any pepper in this. And I'm gonna put a little bit of cinnamon, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. 
and I'm going to skip the cloves. I'm going to keep that just in case that would be too much. I'm going to skip that in this. And I'm putting the two cloves of garlic in. And then I'm going to put some thyme in. And then I'm going to pressure cook this for about a minute. But I'll do that off camera because that's where the pressure cooker is over there. All right. Any comments? Any questions? Any? Well, Mark says, Mark Grimes says the deal breaker for him with the speed is that he has to have the pressure. So. Oh, yeah, 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 so, yeah. Yeah, it's not like a... Yeah. It has nothing to do with pressure cooking. So that wasn't a very good... on the fence with an air fryer or a steamer, it's probably... Really yeah, yeah. It, the pressure cooker for me, like, it, personally, because I love pressure cooking... I would pick a foodie over a speedy any day. Um, but there's a lot of people who don't like pressure cooking or who have a pressure cooker. Maybe they have a foodie. They want to add another air fryer. The And with, you know, air fryer with extra things. So, I mean, I can see. I can see getting it. Although you can get the Ninja Foodie, this one, for the same price as that with the added features. So, you know. Some people like the square design, though. Some people like the color. You know, you just don't know. Uh, okay, I'm not going to put any oil in. I thought about that. Oh, time. What's this off? Mark says, oh, wait, that's just your studio kitchen. Oh, he says, yeah, I need a bigger kitchen, Louise. Oh, wait, that's just your studio kitchen. Yeah, it's. I mean, there's no refrigerator in here. It is a working kitchen. It's a work. It's a working kitchen. Refrigerator is in kind of the prep kitchen area on the other side. I have to have a big kitchen, whether wherever I live. I mean, I've worked in small kitchens. I just can't do it. But I cook a lot, you know. So it's just what what I want, what I like. I. I'll tell you, people who can cook in small kitchens, and many, many people can put out some amazing meals in small kitchens. My hat goes off to them. I'm just such a messy cook. Like, I've got this whole thing, like, totally covered, basically. Well, people like the uh, design. Everybody loves the colors and the Thanks. design and everything. The studio kitchen. We're very happy. It was a really difficult place to get to, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. But I think any any renovation project or whatever, yep. a lot of problems. Yeah. They're, they're personal. All the problems become personal. <laughs> All right, so so you know what's going on. Louise is in the other side of the kitchen setting up another food to pressure cook. The apples and all those ingredients to create a sauce. Yeah. So she's coming back now. All right. So how many minutes are we on countdown? Because I don't want to turn these while they're hot. What is the timer say? Okay. So I still have a lot of steam coming out. So I'm not going to open the lid yet. Because there's still quite a bit of steam and I want to give as much steam in there as possible to cook. And I know the pork's not done quite yet. And that is mostly because I want to make sure that our um, orzo in the bottom has enough time to cook in that boiling liquid. And I don't want to let the steam out too soon. So it's been 10 minutes. So five minutes, I'm going to check the time. Well, that's a nice thing about steaming crisp is you can peak. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can't peak with pressure, but it is what it is. Yep. And I'm guessing. Everything I did tonight was just educated guessing. I mean, from liquid amounts to timing to everything, because I've never made this meal before. And this is how I start if I'm starting a recipe. Obviously, I would never do it in two different things for a recipe, because I would rather use... You know, I would rather do two different timings or something like that, or maybe two different rubs to see which one tasted better. 
but I'll tell you what, the, the smell in here is amazing. There's some cinnamon. There's yeah, some it's cinnamon. very, very nice. Very interesting. It's very nice. I want to peek so badly. I'm not going to. Oh, I'm nervous. I'm a little nervous. Are my Brussels sprouts going to be cooked correctly? That's that's a big one. I hope so. Oh, well. Juliet said I was going to get a foodie, but my son, um, son and I got, or, or my son and daughter-in-law got me an instant pot, so I canceled the foodie. Wrong with that? No, nothing wrong without the instant pot. I don't know if you got the instant pot duo crisp, which has the air crisping lid. Um, that would be the one I would get if I was going to get Instant Pot brand. But, um, yeah, no problem. You know, the pressure cooker part of the Instant Pot plus the sear saute on the Instant Pot, I mean, they all work the same. You just, if you don't have the crisping lid, you just don't have this, uh, the ability to do the air fry stuff. But still wonderful. I mean, you know, the Instant Pots have been out way before the Ninja Foodie. So definitely tons of people have them, and there's tons of recipes for Instant Pots. Annette Burkett uh, wants to know if you could recap the seasoning on the pork loin and the settings on the pork. Yes, I can do that. Okay, so for the seasoning rub on the pork, I used, this is two pork tenderloins, okay? I used two teaspoons of fine, well, I used kosher salt tonight or fine grind sea salt, one teaspoon of pepper, half of a teaspoon of garlic powder, half of a teaspoon of onion powder, Half of a teaspoon of cinnamon, I believe, and a quarter teaspoon of cloves. That was the dry rub. I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah. And then the settings were steam and crisp on both models. And I set the temperature at 350 for 30 minutes. But I'm not going to need to go the whole 30 minutes. I'm positive about that. Well, I say I'm positive. Who knows? Maybe I will, but I don't think so. Because remember, we have that little bit of ramp up time when it's starting to boil and steam, and that's still cooking the food. So I'm, I don't, I didn't time it this time because I have my shirt disaster. But I'm thinking it probably is about eight minutes on average. Sometimes it takes a little bit less time. Like I think the the speedy took four minutes with one cup of water, but that was just one cup of water. So obviously, when you add in the pasta like we have in the bottom here, it's going to take a little bit more time to build the steam. And then it switches over to the crisping lid fan. So you still got the steam in there, but the bottom stops engaging the heat element, the heating element's bottom, and the top engages for that dry heat. So it's like the best of both worlds. And, and I'm doing the same thing in both. Okay, are we down to 15 minutes yet? I think we would. We are, we are on the speed okay yeah, so 18 minutes left on the okay ah uh, i need to look i can't i can't handle it anymore i got the shots out ready to go oh my gosh wow wow okay i i that looks amazing okay let me get something to start turning this around i, I wasn't prepared <laughs> Wow. So one thing I can tell you, which I didn't even pay attention to at all, is how high my pork is. It's stuck to the burner. Yeah. I'm going to tilt the camera up so people can see. That's sage up there. Oh. Wow. There you go. You see the okay. All right. So let's take a temp here. We are at 140, so probably another, uh, depending on how you like your, your pork, I do 145, so basically another five minutes and we'll be done with this one. Okay, are we down to 15 on this one yet? No, you got two minutes to go. Okay. Yikes! So I have this pretty full, and that's with that. Um, speedy rack right in the middle. Unfortunately, like I wish it was incremental. Like you could go up, you know, one notch, two notch, three notches. That would be really helpful, but you can't. So let's what see. What we still don't know is what's happening underneath there. 
No, we don't know. So, so. No, we don't know. We don't it's, know. Bobby did a little research and she said that you had the ratio is correct. I did? Just guessing? Wow! That's pretty cool. All right. Oh my gosh. Don't let me you go past minute, that. You have a minute left. We're done. Tasha said, impressive. Go speedy. She's going to be. I knew you would be team speedy. She's going to be team speedy. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. So I'm waiting for this to get to 15 minutes. Yep. Yeah, you got about 47 seconds. Okay, so I set it for 30. So 15 minutes. I don't even know if this really, for me, needs the extra five minutes. Um, but I don't want people to freak out that the pork's too under. But what, what am I on this one now? I can't you, say. Oh, hold on a sec. 13 minutes. I'm going to... Okay, I'm checking again. I do not want to ruin this just because. Yeah, I'm at 145. I'm done. I'm done. That is what the recommendation is. So 145. So there we go. Now, what I would ordinarily do if I was like able to do this a little bit better for presentation purposes. Oh, don't let me go for that minute. I got to go. I got to switch over here. Okay. Oh, this looks good too. Less cooked. Everything's less cooked. And we are at 131. Okay. So it's not just about the space inside. There's also a wattage difference on this. Who? Did somebody tell you that? Yeah, somebody saying that there's um, higher wattage. I don't know which one. The Ninja has higher wattage. Look the Brussels sprouts in there. They look good. They look really good. I'm not doing a very good job of plating because, as you can see, I'm in a very weird angle here. So we're just throwing things there. Okay. Oh my goodness. That looks amazing. All right, we need to put some butter in here, don't we? Look, I could have used some more. I, I could have used a little bit more. All right, let's get some butter in here and loosen this up and make it delicious. You want me to grab some butter? Yes, please. Oh my gosh, of course it doesn't matter. It's gotta taste good. So I'm gonna put some in this bowl. Let me make sure it's done. If not, if it's not done, I can add a little more liquid and use sear saute. Oh. Oh my gosh, that's good. This is a uh, cold water. Oh my. That is the best. I'm going to put it in two tablespoons. Oh my gosh, Jeff. Wait till I wait till I mix in this butter and give you some of this. This is the best. It's chewy. I don't think I've ever had orzo, to be honest with you. Have you? I might have, but I don't remember when. I love the texture of this. But I don't know if it's overcooked or not. There goes my sage leaf. <laughs> Or no, that's a Brussels sprout. Leaf. Oh my gosh. I made actually, because I do want it to be a little bit looser. It's a little starchy. Um, a little bit of olive oil in there with that butter. But the flavor, there we go. There we go. The flavor of this orzo is the best I've ever had. I'm in such a weird angle. Mm -hmm. Oh! 
Speed up the speedy. That just made a delicious meal. All right. Did somebody, Mark said that it lived up to its name. Oh my gosh. Speedy. That's, that's simply amazing. Simply amazing. Okay. How many more minutes has this one gone now? I don't want to get this out of control here. What number are we on? We're at 11, 16, 11, 15. We're done. I overcooked it a little bit. My fault. Oh my gosh. All right. Oh, all those Brussels sprouts are good. Okay. Now, I have another one of those somewhere. Do you happen to know where to go? There, there we is. go. There we go. Oh my gosh, that Brussels sprout tasted good. Okay, pork tenderloin. Dried thyme. Okay, these are less done. I can definitely tell you that, which may be good, may not, but may not be good. I'm not sure yet. But the, I mean, they seem cooked fine. How many minutes did we go? Let's not forget that because that's important. All uh, right, we got 11 minutes left on this. Okay, so 20 minutes, basically. It could have gone another minute. It would have been okay. And the other one you have to remember. was about 18 minutes, right? Maybe a little less. Yeah. Okay, moment of truth. Oh, this is dangerous, but I'm doing it. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Oh, now there's more liquid in here. So this didn't dry out as much. So there was more liquid in here. Not bad though, like not too much. I don't have to do the loosening like I did with that one. All right, should we have Jeff do a blind taste test? So he doesn't know which. I think that's a good idea. Which is which. Look at this. So, I mean, for all intents and purposes, I would say, since I overcooked this a little bit, they probably did it in about the same time, really. What do you well, think? I mean, it seems to me like the uh, there's a difference between the, the time for the top and the time for the bottom. I think the foodie did a better job with this orzo, but I mean, right. So the, the bottom didn't overcook, whereas in the speedy, the bottom might have overcooked. Yeah. But the opposite is true of the top. Yeah. The meat was. All right. They look good, though. I mean, they really do. Now, I've got to taste this one just to see if it's any. Right. Then when you're ready, I'll Okay, I'm going to make a little. I'm going to. Taste this. Yeah, I'm going to do a blind taste test. Okay. Blind? That means we get to blindfold you? No, I just won't, I just won't look at what you're oh. putting where. Oh, my gosh. This is good. Okay. Mm. Oh, yeah. Somebody said you have to. You have to add butter to the foodie one or it's not going to be fair. Well, it's not, I didn't need it. Okay. So I could definitely add it, but it doesn't need it. It needed it. It was too dry and it was a little chewy and I needed to loosen it up some. So that's one of the differences in cooking. So the foodie, in my opinion, both taste delicious. I don't think we're going it, to, it's not enough butter to make a difference in flavor, um, it was about the texture that I wanted. So I fixed basically this one, the speedy one. I didn't need to fix the foodie one. All in all, everything in the foodie looks a little bit better than coming out of the speedy. And that's just a matter of preference. The Brussels sprouts have enough crisp on them, but these got a little too done. The tenderloin, even though this one is over temperature, um, it looks better. The sauce. Yeah, the sauce. That is, oh, it's, it's giving, I got an add water notice. <laughs> um, can I just put that little uh, tiny uh, bit in there? Yeah, yeah, the sauce. Okay, Jeff, let me investigate my app, which it doesn't matter because it's going to be done. It's going to be burnt. <laughs> All right, so no sauce tonight. I don't know, though. Let's do it. Let's, um, I'm going to pour in some water. All right, in case you because can't hear. It looks so good. 
she did get the add water notice, so she's adding a little water to the pot. Add she's stirring it up, trying to make this up. sauce. Let's see if I can get it. Because it doesn't look burnt. Yeah, it doesn't look burnt. But I don't know if it's going to taste burnt or not. I, I don't know yet. They both look good. They both look very good. Yeah. They both look very good. I'm not going to taste anything because so i got to do the blind taste. No, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to put it in a tray. We need like eight more cameras to cover all the angles in this kitchen. <laughs> no, we don't. Are you going to do this on camera over here? No, I'm going to blend it up over here. Just easier. I'm going to put a blender to my sauce. So I pressure cooked, got the water notice, added some water, like a quarter cup. Didn't need to go back under pressure. Now I don't know if it's burnt. So it could be, it might be not salvageable, but I'm trying. So I don't know how much we can hear what you're saying over there, but a lot of people are saying as far as the pork goes, the distance from the rack to yep. the burnt, the element yep. is a big deal. Yes, it is. I agree. So let me make Jeff up a little tasting tray. <laughs> and we're going to see what he thinks. So what I need you to do, I am going to have you close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay. I ain't looking at nothing. Oh, he's not going to be able to tell. He's not going to be able to tell. He's not. Okay. And again, one Brussels sprout that's about the same. One Brussels sprout, they're about the same. Okay. We're doing this fair. This, is, this feels very juicy. And then we'll put this on. Looks good. Oh, please don't fall. And I'll give him the end on the other one too. Oops. But it was this end pretty much. They both look good. Okay. Now let me slice this. I have to keep remembering. So I have to remember this. All right, ready? Yeah, can I come over there? Yeah. And I can look at everything? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. they look pretty much, I would say, identical. Okay. Okay. So I know what these are. Here you go. So first you're gonna taste the, start here. Okay. Then here, then, you know. And you're going to grade so each one. Orzo. And we want to grade on texture, flavor. Mm. Flavor's good. I don't know much about Orzo. I'm going to have to compare them to really know. But I like that. Okay. Well, I don't know much about Orzo either. So you just, you just tell me which one you like better, you know. Mm. That one's better. Okay. So the one on the right's better. This one almost feels like it's dried up or something. Okay. And then what about flavor wise? Are they comparable in flavor? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. All right. Hey, Russell Sprout. Good texture. Flavor's good. Let's try this one. I like that a little bit better because the first one was a little bit softer. 
Okay. It's going to have more texture to it. Okay. Now save some for a sauce, but take one. Yeah, I'm just going to have one. Oh my gosh, that's good. Still hot. Let me try this one. I think the pork here is juicier. Okay. I'm gonna guess that this was the the foodie slightly overcooked. And this was a speedy because that was juicy, super juicy. This was a little dried out. So my guess is that this side here. Okay, now try it with a little of the sauce. Oh, this is a good meal. It is a good meal. It's definitely going to be a recipe. This is definitely a good one. Oh, my. I thought that was going to be super sweet. No, it's not it's sweet not. at all. Mm -mm. Uh -oh. You get the apple, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's okay. not sweet. I didn't it's put any sweet. So sweet. I'm going to take this small one so that you can have a nice big bite there. All right. So basically. So my guess is that this one here is the foodie. Yeah. This one here is the speedy. Yeah. And I couldn't say I like one better than the other. I think for the bottom, for the pasta. I like the foodie for the Brussels sprouts are about the same. I think I like this one better. Mm -hmm. I definitely like the pork in the speedy better because it wasn't overcooked. Interesting. Okay. But all right. Bottom line, that's delicious. And that spike, that sauce is so good. Mm -hmm. Wow. That is good. That is really good. Mm. I did not expect to have a, such a delicious meal. Yes. I, I'm i pretty pleased, too. Now, that pork, I mean, it's even a little spicy, but not that, in a bad the, way. The sauce has a really nice kick to it. There's no kick in the sauce, though. It's Where's, in the pork rub. Oh. It, Black the, pepper. The sauce pulls it out. But it really is still, it's amazing. Mm. Yeah, I can say this is a little more tender. Now, they're both overdone for me. But that to me. So, all right, Brussels sprout, Ninja Foodie. Wow. That is really good. Now, it's a little soft for me. Which isn't that odd? It got more steam because it was closer to the bottom of that. So the Brussels yeah. sprouts came Brussels, out pretty similar. Pretty similar. Speedy's a bit better. I agree. Now, mm. I'm telling you that both of them. Neither of them is a fail. No. At all. No. Now, now I know I put butter in a little olive oil, so this one's a little richer. I can kind of pick that up. I prefer the texture of this one. It's just a little drier, a little chewier, but they're both so good. Which one do you like better? I like the Speedy down the line. Oh, you like the Speedy Orzo too? Better. Interesting. Yeah. I am in love with this meal, though. Like, it is so good. You get the little bit of thyme flavor. You get the little bit of the sage flavor. But nothing's overwhelming. Right, Jeff? I mean, nothing's... No, that's what's amazing. The flavors are so perfectly balanced. That, oh, my God. You know, we throw away a lot of food. We're not throwing We're going to eat all of it. I won't eat all the orzo. No. Because like carbs. But, but we, this will be... We, we this will eat will this. This will be something we'll be... It's so delicious. It is so delicious. All right. Well, I would say that it's a great Tasty Tuesday, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and I'm going to have to give this one to the Speedy.
I, you know, it's, yeah, even though I think this, this pork looks better and I did overcook it. That's my fault. I probably could have stopped this the exact time I stopped this. So that means that the times would be the same, you know, overall. All right. Any Remember, time to time to pressure is cook time, but so is time to breathe. Right. So that's why you overcooked yeah. stuff on the ninja. But Mark was saying that the reason that you mm. the orzo in the speedy dried out a little bit is because it's closer to the element. That makes a lot of sense. What because of height? Yeah, the element yeah. Of speed. So it's it's what maybe an inch. Yeah, it's not too much a though. Difference. But there yeah. was a little bit less volume in the mm -hmm. pot altogether. Mm. I think orzo might be my new favorite thing. Wow. All right. Any last minute comments? I'm just blown away. I don't know. People are still people are still really engaged in this. And um, got some thumbs up. What a fun show. Mm. Um, could you do it with chicken? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Your timings would be different. Could you make it in the 11 in one? Um, yes, differently though, um, differently, but I don't see why you couldn't steam it. Like I would probably steam for five minutes, maybe eight and then air crisp at a high temperature for a shorter period of time to get the rest of the top done. I'll have to try it out. So this, the winner is the speedy, right? I, for me, yeah, for you, it's kind of a mix. But for me, I, yeah, down the line, I just enjoyed. And basically, the biggest difference for me, because the flavors are spot on different. I mean, spot on the same. Like, there's no difference. For me, it was the texture of the orzo that I liked better. That really did it. Now, there was a richness from the butter, but I know I put that in there. I know I put the olive oil in there to loosen it up. So I wasn't, I'm not judging it based on the flavor difference, which is so tiny. Jeff didn't even notice it. But yeah, I like the texture better. So yeah, I'm, I'm speedy. Okay. I've still got a, a nice burn from the spice that you yeah. used in the rub. Very, very. It is very nice. And I don't mean spicy, like, oh my gosh, you got to down, you know, gallons of water. It's got a nice flavor. It's beautiful. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is very close to the time we did chili as far as a Tasty Tuesday goes. Uh -huh. Where the results. I want to eat more. Were, although we've had a lot of mind blowing results from Tasty Tuesday. We have had a lot this of good. This might be the best yet. As far, okay, I would say as far as a 360 meal goes, yeah. Yeah, when you can mm. do orzo and Brussels sprouts in the same pot, mm -hmm. and, and that wasn't by design, like, orz, like mm. Brussels sprouts need to be a dry cook, right? Mm, no, they do really well. Those are like a your little cabbage. I think it's so good. They do better with a little steam and then dry if you like them crispy. So a lot of people boil or steam their Brussels sprouts. They don't even put any dry heat on it. I like the combination. I like the, I like the outside to be crispy. I don't yes, but when you do that on the stove, moist. when we always do that on the stove, we quarter them. You know, because you don't want them to burn on the outside before they get soft enough in the middle. So when I do them on the stove, like pan fry Brussels sprouts, I always, I have a fat in there, like bacon or um, olive oil or something like that. And then I always saute them, they're quartered so that they're brown on the outside, soft in the center. This did this. That's what these are. Probably not as crispy as Jeff would like on the outside. It's but, not about crispy. It's about it's that, so that that flavor of the char that you get on yeah. the outside of a mm. leaf. Now, what about the apples? Somebody asked, did you taste the apples? I didn't. 
they look a little bit better from the foodie. Mm. They're good. Um, the apples are sagey. They're good. They're interesting. The smell in the kitchen is sagey, but in a good way. Oh, both apples are good. The apples from the Speedy are a little less done. At least that one. Maybe it was bigger. I mean, you can change the way they cook by cutting them bigger. So if you wanted them firmer, just don't cut them into small, you know, slices. Make them chunkier. And they won't cook as, you know, they'll be firmer. They're, they're, everything's delicious. I'm like, I'm like blown away by this. And the so shallot. The whole cook mm. definitely took a, took longer than an hour and a half. Well, no, there no, was no. There a lot of talking going on. Yeah, I was going to say, no way. So I stopped this at what, what time? There was 15 minutes left? I think so. So if you had your prep there was, done. There was 11 minutes or something. Yeah, and I overcooked that. So I should have stopped them at the same time. Um, wow. What was I going to say? I'm blown away right now by this because they were so good. Um, if you had your prep done and everything done, I mean, this is a meal that you could get done in under 30 minutes easy. Maybe not with the sauce. After, after prep. After prep. But including prep, probably um, an hour. Yeah, probably. I mean, I talk a lot though, so... You know, it depends on how fast you are with prep. I don't know. I'll have to start timing myself. Like if I want to rush this and see how fast can I get it done. But that's not really fair either because I might cut the shallots faster than you. I might do things slower than you. So it's really, there's no way to time prep really. But so where are the shallots good. in them? Are they just they're in there and they're flavor? delicious. They just have yeah, they're in here with the Brussels sprouts and the onions and everything. They're good. Everything's good. I'm thrilled. All right. I think that's a wrap. Well, thank you, everybody. And yeah. If we didn't get back to your comments, uh, Louise always watches these. I try to look through the comments and see, but are there any that you see that I can answer like right now? Because um, I'm not going to be going through them tonight. No. Mark Grimes suggested a little lemon squeeze at the end. Yeah, I thought about that, wrong though. With that. There'd be nothing wrong with that. That'd be so good. Betty Davis said, is the basket of the foodie deeper than the speedy? Um, that's a good question. I wasn't sure. I'd have to look and see. Um, I wasn't sure if I could use the basket because I didn't want the basket legs all in with the orzo. I mean, obviously, I've got the rack legs in there. But I wasn't sure if it would give enough clearance because the basket does sit a little lower. So I just answered your question in a very roundabout way. But... The basket does sit a little bit lower. Oh, and you, you warded off evil spirits with the sage. Wow. I still haven't made up my mind on the pork. I think I need another bite. Mm. Just to be sure that it's delicious. Well, here you go. Oh, yeah, with the sauce. Got with the sauce. sauce. It's so good. Mm. finger looking good best tasty tuesday ever all right all right guys thanks so much for joining in we had a great time as always i will see you next tuesday for a q a that means no appliances it's just me chatting with you guys over the computer so i'll see you next week Bye bye